So I wanted to uh, read an excerpt from a book by Erwin Schrodinger uh, called uh, My View of the World. And uh, Schrodinger was a quantum physicist, and this excerpt um, is his understanding of what uh, quantum physics means for you, for your identity as a human being. Um, and certainly there are many uh, forms or uh, means of interpreting quantum physics, but um, it's this one in particular that I seem to resonate most with, and uh, I wanted to share it. So I'll read it, and then uh, give a little of my own commentary. So, it is not possible that this unity of knowledge, feeling, and choice, which you call your own, should have sprung into being from nothingness at a given moment not so long ago. Rather, this knowledge, feeling, and choice are essentially eternal and unchangeable and numerically one in all humans, nay, in all sensitive beings, but not in this sense, that you are a part, a piece, of an eternal infinite being, an aspect or modification of it, as in Spinoza's, Spinoza's pantheism. For we should have the same baffling question, which part which aspect are you? What objectively differentiates you from the others? No, but inconceivable as it seems to ordinary reason, you, and all other conscious beings as such, are all in all. Hence this life of yours, which you are living, is not merely a piece of the entire existence, but is in a certain sense the whole. Only this whole is not so constituted that it can be surveyed in a single glance. So, you may look at my body in a single glance with your eyes and empirically say that you have uh, sensed a distinct and individual body which exists in and of itself. Um, and you know, this is uh, what, what, what you would be referring to me then, my body as some sort of substance, and maybe you could draw further distinctions between my body and my ego or my soul, and that would just be another substance which is somehow related to this fleshy uh, material substance. Um, but let's just say we're not going to go into that kind of complexity and say that I am basically my body. Um, we might say that in a single glance I appear to be separate and distinguishable from my environment and from others, other bodies. Um, but what Schrodinger is pointing out here, or at least arguing for, is that um, at the quantum level, an electron, for example, by itself is, is pure potential. Uh, it requires some other bodies uh, to relate to, to become something actual, something particular. Um, and so its identity is constituted by the system of relationships um, within which it finds its place. Um, and in a similar way, myself, my body, as an organism, is really an organism environment field of interaction, continual exchange of matter and energy. Um, but energy, again, of, of, of two kinds. We can make this further complexification and understand that this body is more than just a physical object. It's also a spiritual subject. Uh, and by spiritual, I don't mean to imply another substance separate from what we may think of as a physical substance. I mean to just get rid of the whole idea of substances at all. A substance is something which requires nothing but itself in order to exist. So to think of my body as a substance, or my soul as a substance, um, we would have to say that it exists as a separate object. And, uh, you know, if we're going to take what Schrodinger is pointing at seriously, we can't do that. There are no substances, there are no things which require nothing but themselves in order to exist. What we call individual things are really distinctions that we make through our symbolic linguistic activity in a field of undifferentiated potential. Um, and, you know, certainly we can distinguish various aspects of this field. There is this body here with a relatively 
individual experience, and there are other bodies out there with relatively individual experiences, but only relatively speaking, at the most objective level, we're capable of um, scientifically understanding at the quantum level of reality, you can't draw these sharp lines between separate bodies. They're not separate bodies. They're systems of interaction and exchange. Um, and when you bring relativity theory into it uh, and recognize that mat matter and, and energy are basically interchangeable, um, then reality itself is this undifferentiated flux of, of dynamic energy. Um, and it's, it's all one, one cosmos. And though it is one, it seems to be in this, this process of development. And um, Schrodinger talks about the wholeness of it, but he doesn't necessarily talk about the, the genesis of it, the evolution of it, the becomingness of it. Um, and I don't think he would mean to leave this out. Um, but when we extend evolution to a cosmic scale, I think we recognize not only is the cosmos whole, but it's constantly developing, and it develops holonically um, in a, into a, a holarchical form. Holarchy is a term coined by Ken Wilber, which combines hierarchy with uh, holon. A holon is a whole part. Um, he thinks reality is basically nested collections or sets of whole parts which build a certain hierarchical um, structure so atoms um, are contain are parts of molecules which are a new whole but that whole molecules is part of another new whole which would be macromolecules and those parts are the part of a larger whole which is a cell which are part of a larger whole which is a body um, a multicellular organism, which is part of a larger whole, at least at the level of human multicellular organisms called society. And all of these organisms on planet Earth, human or otherwise, are part of Gaia, the planet as a whole, um, which is part of the solar system, the galaxy, and so forth. And this process of holarchical nesting seems to be developing and complexifying over time. And uh, at the base of it, again, would be this quantum principle of relatedness of each body, every being, conscious being, conscious entity, which, uh, you know, I'm not speaking for Schrodinger here, but I would say that particles, subatomic particles, atoms, molecules, all of these what we would typically, typically call inorganic beings, are somehow capable of, of sensing, of, of being sensible, of feeling. Uh, and what it means to feel, well, it means you can contrast the past with the future. Um, you can recognize the difference between actuality and potentiality. And atoms don't do this um, to a very high degree, but they must have... It, somehow in germ, otherwise life and consciousness would never have been possible later on in the evolution of the cosmos. Um, so I'll leave it there, and uh, it's always interesting to hear what people think or how they um, build quantum physics into their larger worldview, because certainly if you're going to have a worldview which has incorporated the findings of science, you've got to say something about quantum physics, because it differs um, drastically. Uh, from 17th century classical physics. So if you think science basically amounts to um, classical physics, you're kind of missing out on the last 100 plus years of discovery which has occurred in um, that most fundamental of sciences, uh, physics. So I'm interested to hear uh, what people think of this particular perspective. Uh, and I don't pretend it to be anything otherwise. So uh, let me know uh, what you thought. Thanks for listening.